components. Right. So um, can can one of you like uh, tell me like what are the main rack components and what do they do? Basically, let's just again start by gauging your own understanding on things. Can you tell me like the components or the steps that you go through when you are using a rack system? Hilary, yes, go ahead. Yeah, the main components, you have the retriever and the generator. And uh, uh, yeah, those. The generator and the retriever. Yes. Yes. OK. Uh, can you tell me which which uh, what is the like what is the role of each one? Uh, the retriever gets the context uh, from the various sources, like if it's the documents or PDFs or online sources, uh, and then the generator. Uh, yeah, the retriever gets all those context and passed on to the generator, and generator produces the uh the the correct response okay based great. on the varied context context okay yes okay so yeah basically that's correct yes uh sheila um another component that was that is optional is also the reranker that um ranks the that ranks yeah that ranks the retrieved messages that's the retrieved information to the ones that are actually relevant to the prompt that is asked then also retrieval follows the process of um chunking and embedding whereby um embedding allows the information to be characterized into characterized into vectors that are passed on to a vector database then after that the vector data the generation is guided by the vector database by looking for common, yeah, for words that have the common vectors. That's what I understood. Okay. Yes, uh, you mentioned like a uh, um, like express, like additional components. Yes, uh, compared to what Hillary has mentioned. Anyone else? So thank you, Hillary and Sheila. And yeah, what you both mentioned was uh, accurate. Anyone else who want to like share? You can even like uh, just repeat what they said and like with your own understanding. Just like let me see how many of you like get like um, understand like uh, what is the role of each part of the rag system. Okay, just one last volunteer, let's say. One person. Okay, Abdurrahman, go ahead. Uh, Sheila and Hillary, but uh, uh, can you hear me all? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, the, your voice is breaking. Okay. Can you repeat? Uh, uh, my understanding for RAG is uh, our document in a vector database. So then we can uh, uh, restore the data with the LLM easily. So okay. that's that's all. That's all I can say now. Okay. Right. So well, that's basically like that's the basic idea. Yes, you're you're right. Uh, you're like uh, Hillary, as Hillary and Sheila and Abdurrahman have said. Yes. So the rack system is like um, exactly it's from its name. Give me this one moment. So yeah, given its name, it's a retriever augmented um, a generation means that in uh, in addition to the generation there is a retriever part and uh, and that basically have a data that we are we are adding and um the retriever just retrieves the data that is relevant to to the prompt to answer like the 
the prompt we have, and then the LLM, the generation, will use this prompt, use this retrieve the data to to like augment uh, or enhance its answer, or it can provide completely the answer just from the document. So, yeah, this is in short. Uh, so, like, uh, just looking at it here, it looks I know it looks complicated. But the point here is that uh, there are like um, so yeah so there is the retriever and the generation so like the left part is a generation and the right part is the retriever and basically what you're looking here at is that you get documents so this is your data you lo you load your data into a vector database as mentioned. So when you load your documents here, what you're doing is that you're chunking your, your documents or your data, you're, you're dividing it into small chunks. So that like, like at, um, at most one or a few of these chunks would be retrieved, not the, whole, not the whole data. Remember that our generation model has a, a limited size prompt, so it cannot take like a huge um, document as input. It has to be within the limit uh, of the number of tokens the prompt can take. So that's why we divide our documents into chunks. Also, because we want to uh, reduce any kind of... Um, so let, let me talk about this a bit later. But uh, just the, the general idea is that we divide our documents into chunks. We embed them, meaning that we change them from text to vectors. And we store those vectors into the database. Why do we store the embedded vectors, the vectors that like the embedding of the text that carries the semantic meaning of the text? Like we change, this is the meaning of embedding, changing the text to like uh, to a vector that like uh, basically it's a numerical array that carries within it the semantic meaning of the chunk or the text uh, it, that was embedded. Why we do that? Because when we search later on the retriever, what it does, when it searches this ve that, uh, vector database, it, it generally, it uh, what it does, it does it looks for the chunks that are the most um, semantically similar to the prompt to retrieve it. So that's why we are in, uh, in using embedding and like storing the vectors into the vector database. Um, so here is the retriever. What does the retriever do is that the retriever will take the query that is coming from like uh, the user. Of course, we can like uh, in our own, um, like uh, the prompt will be made part partially from the query from the, from the user. Um, and we pass the, that uh, query to the retriever system. The retriever system will look into the vector database, looks for the most relevant piece of text or chunk, get, get that back uh, together with the prompt. So now we have the query and we have the relevant document. And then the, the LLM will use the two. So, here you can see that like, this is a question from the user, and it also is going to be basing uh, the answer of, on, or to the question based on the following information. This is chunk one, chunk two, and chunk three. These were provided by the retriever, and then it will provide for us um, a correct answer, basically. So just this, like, um, so just this is like the general diagram. Um, any questions so far? This is, I mean, this is, I'm not getting actually into the, I haven't gotten into what is that this tutorial is about yet, but like you have to have a, like a, a good understanding of this um, structure first, before we like, we are going to jump into how to improve it. So we have to understand it first. So any questions so far? Like you can say, I don't understand anything. Like you can, like I can, uh, any question is, is acceptable. So um, if you have a question, this is the time to ask it. OK, Jabez. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So my question is when uh, uh, we uh, provide the external data for the RAD so that it could uh, 
C the similarity, the semantic similarity between the user's question and also the external document. Uh, my question is, is the LLM uh, use the external source and also uh, its previous knowledge, pre-trained knowledge and combining it and answer or does it just uh, use the external knowledge? If my question is clear. Uh, yeah, uh, it was cut off at some point for me. So can you repeat the last part? You said like, uh, just like the last part of your question. I didn't hear it. Okay, my question is when the LLM answers, uh, yeah. using, uh, uh, it uses both the external uh, data or the document that we provide uh, through the RAG and also it's it has a previous knowledge yes uh, yes the pre-trained knowledge maybe the fine-tuned also so does it combine both of them in answers or does it just uh, use the external data okay so great question so this is basically um there is a choice here actually so uh, the thing is of course what the first of all the llm is uh, whenever it answers is using like it's like understanding that it learned throughout its pre-training so it uh, its understanding of the language remains of course but this is a choice here the choice comes we can actually restrict our llm so when writing the prompt here we can tell the llm please answer only from these documents and if you don't find the answer within these documents say i don't know something like that so if, if we care, for example, that um, for our application, we want really just um, um, strictly, we will just want factual, uh, a factual answer or like an answer only from our document, we can tell the LLM to do that. We can also like uh, lower its creativity, so lower our uh, temperature. Um, if you like, it's pressure is one of the like parameters we can, you can fix um when like you're passing the prompt to the llm um so yeah so this is a choice if we want our our, our llm to like um, to have some liberty in answering we can't tell it to do that so we can tell it to um like answer from this documents or like um, it's actually one of these kind of uh, uh augmentation we can talk about we can like basically tell the LLM, if it doesn't find an answer, you can just answer from your own knowledge. So that is a, it's a choice. Usually, just for a lot of applications, we really want it to just answer from our documents. We don't want it to hallucinate or like uh, make things up or just answer from its own um, knowledge. So we restrict it, but it's a choice still. So does that answer your question, Jabez? I'm not seeing actually, so. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Any, no, should, should be anything here. Uh, okay, so, all right, other one. Okay, uh, I asked this question this morning, but I think uh, I lost again. Okay. Um. Uh, how we connect your your lecture yesterday uh with rag uh, rag so your i don't know if it's a problem at my side or yours but your voice is breaking so i didn't hear your question at all oh. could you maybe write it down if you have a problem with your okay uh, i will type it okay okay type it and uh um uh, in the meantime is there other questions so just uh, while abdurrahman is uh, typing his question so just to tell you what this uh tutorial is about so here we're talking about techniques to improve the rack system particularly the retriever part mainly so just looking at this um it's very intimidating uh, graph but um yes Al Rahman as as a question. Uh 
Uh, okay, so Abdul Rahman is asking like, how can I correct connect your yesterday lecture with RAG? So yesterday's session was about prompt engineering, and just looking here, you see like the components of the RAG. The RAG have this uh, retriever part, the vector uh, database, the retriever. It has an LLM and a prompt here. So. Um, so this is where the prompt engineering comes in uh, mainly but uh, like um, this is like for the basic rag you use only one prompt um of course here there is, there is mainly uh, another thing here the query here we are passing it to get um you can think about it this is just part of the prompt uh, there, when you do different kind of uh, augmentations or improvement on the RAG system, there might be like other parts where you are, you are using an LLM and a prompt, and there where like uh, also prompt engineering will come in. But just looking at the basic RAG, this is generation. This is just an LLM and a prompt, and here where come where the prompt engineering will come in. So what we talked about yesterday was basically improving this step today's session is going to be about improving these steps here um like uh you when you when you are trying to build a rock system you start with the basic things choose the basic um, methods and the basic basic approaches and uh, like just uh, basic components but then after like getting um the output uh whatever the output you get you can like measure your performance or evaluate your performance and we will talk about the evaluation later on but uh, you can evaluate each step of this uh, of this um, system and you can start then improving each part the prompt here you use like different prompt engineering technique to improve um also actually the rag is it itself is considered like kind of uh, one uh, kind of uh, improving uh, prompts because you are providing uh, an advanced context for your prompt but again this prompt here can be improved further uh, so yeah uh, is that clear to you Abdurrahman? like how these things are connected yeah great Thank you. Um, so just, I wanted to tell you that, um, and this picture is coming from this website, Prompting Guide. So just talking about retrieval augmented generation, here you have the retriever and generator. These are the basic things. And what they have here in this graph is basically different augmentations, or um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? seems like uh, okay um right thank you uh they were saying like my network is down but fine so here like i'm just saying like um this uh, uh it's a comprehensive kind of graph it's showing like different augmentation or improvement techniques like uh, for example for the retriever like you can get better semantic representation aligning queries and documents align retriever and llm and these are like um even sub sub uh, or like different techniques to do that so the chunk optimization there is a fine tuning of embedding models i'm just uh, saying this we're going to go over a bit on details these two for example query rewriting again also uh, embedding transformation so not all of this we're going to go through but like part of those um here like uh different ways to to impl to improve the generator step uh, which we are not going to go through really uh this is like re-ranking the the output from the retriever and um there are like uh like other fine tuning forms for the LLM and RAG, this is like extra fine tuning together. So fine tuning the RAG and instead of like we, your last week channel a challenge was about fine tuning the, an LLM. Here you can fine tune actually a complete RAG together. Um, yeah. So there is a pre retriever and retriever uh, improvement, pre retriever and 
post retriever improvements. Uh, so there are like many things that you can try to to improve on and like uh, uh, basically what they show here are like um, uh, these are literature basically like papers that have tried or done different kind of different techniques to to improve each part of this um, of this of the rug. So I'm just like showing you this as just to understand the the big pictures like there are many 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 things that can be done but we're going to go through a few and understand like what part they improve and uh, uh, how significant they are some stuff like that so just not really of course you are free to to do your own research you have limited time but of course like um this is um so yes, consider this a point as keep in mind that there are many things that you can do. So starting with the first thing, which is a pre-retriever actually. So it's not exactly the if proving the retriever, we are talking about the chunking approach. I don't know, maybe you have discussed this already in the in the morning session. So just to like um, so from the start, when you before you load your data into the vector database, you have to break it down into chunks remember keep, keep in mind that uh only one chunk or a, a few chunks can be passed to the generator as a context okay so the how you approach the chunking how you break down your text will depend on a, a few things one is the content you're dealing with so what kind of text actually you have um what kind of documents you have sometimes maybe you have a table or a csv file and you can just break it row by row for example and um maybe you have this uh, free free flowing text and then you can like decide to do do you want to break it by like uh, um paragraphs or like uh, sections if you have sections of things like um, maybe you have legal documents and then legal documents have uh like sections with particular like numbering and uh, maybe you want to just keep each section together instead of breaking it down to smaller parts um so depending on the content you have depending also on the application you're generating your responses for like um what will be like your user asking for uh, you have to keep that in mind um would like would um the chunking your chunking approach have to pro uh, like uh, to uh, to provide uh enough or like educate um uh, context for to answer your user of course you have to also be, uh, remember that we're chunking we're reducing the size because we have um uh, the prompt has a limited um prompt uh, win, uh, window window context window i'm saying it wrong um there is a like a fixed number of tokens that can be passed so the text has to be of a particular length not not to exceed the, in a particular length another thing you have to keep in mind like you can say like okay i can pass like a, a really big as big as possible like whatever like my if my prompt uh, um takes like um 4, uh, tokens for example if you are using like GP, gpt4 or something i can pass it like a whole a whole document and that could be fine as far as like a context window uh, goes but the problem is there's a problem of uh, noise you think if you are telling your doc your prompt in your prompt you're telling the llm to answer from your document and you are giving it a document with so much information it might not be able to focus on the actually relevant part to the answer and just answer you from some some other different part from the document so you have to like your chunk have to be big enough to contain the whole context that you need so not like just pass a, a sentence that loses it like if you break your your text into sentences it might be you are um or like into words let's say you're breaking it down i'm going to take the other extreme so breaking it down to into words then you're you're losing the context of course you're losing the meaning actually um when you pass 
word by word to the to the prompt to the LLM, it will not going to understand what you, what you're passing. So you have to keep that. You want to pass something that is long enough to include the context, but not too big that it includes relevant stuff. Also, it matters because in remember when you are retrieving the the chunks, you are using you are using similarity. Um, uh, similar, uh, you're using uh, like a semantic simula similarity based on some embedding and so embedding models have like depending on what embedding model you use um, they work better uh, like for example sentence transformer works better with single sentences while text embedding at the other 002 this is one from OpenAI performs better with blocks containing up to 250 or 50 500 tokens so you have to keep the embedding mind embedding model in mind uh, and how it works better it's measuring the uh, the semantic uh, similarity between your prompt and the the chunks you have in your um vector store okay so these are like i cannot tell you what to use you have to experiment to 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 some extent uh, there are different chunking strategies. You can use fixed length chunking. So you say like, okay, every chunk is going to be, let's say 500 tokens or five, like, um, I don't know, 20 words. Um, it can be sentence aware chunking. So don't break like uh, um, a sentence mid, like don't break your chunks mid sentence. You want to finish your sentence. You can use like the chunk, uh, sentence aware chunking. You can use semantic chunking in that case. You are using actually the embedding model, and the embedding model is going to be looking at the um, at your like sent basically your sentences, measuring that they are embedding and seeing like if the um, so it takes the first sentence, the second if the second sentence is semantically related to it, it will keep it. If it's uh, like a, a, the the similarity is below some threshold, it will like um, cut the chunk at that point. And moves to like uh, um, to put it in a new one. So these are just a few ones you can actually look at. Um, let's say here, for example, one important thing you can do is a kind of recursive uh, split. Here, let's say. So you start by breaking um, your. Um, so okay so one of the chunking methods you have is that keeping an overlap so you can have a chunk size and overlap so meaning that um uh, the between the first chunk and the second chunk will be an overlap in the middle so that you are, if you are like cutting something in the in in cutting some context in the middle you might be getting it full in the next in the next in the next chunk um uh so basically splitting first on um on like uh basically on paragraphs and then on spaces uh uh recursively okay so that you basically what you're telling it to break on paragraphs so if it's still beyond the size you are requiring break uh, break further on these like um on these separators so in in order basically uh, and it's like it's a functionality that is available from this is long chain. Um, okay, so recursive characters text splitter, you can use that. Um, and it's um, okay, so this is one of the approaches. As I told you, there is like uh, you can see there are different approaches here. It's like text splitter here. So there is semantic chunking, you can find it here um so the of course this one um you okay basically you have to experiment to to see and depending on the on the context and the application you want to use it will depend on there yeah, so any questions so far there are many things we have to talk about so i will move on but if there is any question please just raise your hand um, another thing that you can do, or it's useful to do, is to attach a metadata to your chunks. Or like its chunk in, in a llama index uh, uses a word node for, for chunk. 
So your node or your chunk, you can attach metadata to them. The point is that when you're chunking generally from large document, like however, like use like um, whatever kind of chunk approach you use, you might be still losing some kind of contextual information just because like maybe um, just from reading a long text, sometimes if you break it down to smaller parts, um, you're just losing some contextual information. And um, so you can add those as metadata, for example, like um, the source file name, the date and time. So this is just like not even part of the text, like maybe when it was added, uh, document title, if you have section title, subsection name, this is good. I think like uh, this is particularly was good for maybe legal documents because uh, um because you will find like maybe it has like a legal documents or contracts it would be like good to have the section title because like to when you answer you have a chunk that is maybe a paragraph or so but it is part of the section that is a particular article or a particular law or whatever just like a, i'm not precisely using these uh, terms correctly but but just like a I think these are like some kind of use cases where these are important. The position of document can be important for, for like for some use cases, keywords like product names or like a document type. This can also be added as uh, as a metadata. Um, you can, of course, you can provide this metadata basically by hand. You can automatically extract metadata. Uh, by there is this uh, llama index metadata extractor. There are uh, keywords uh, extractor like um, LLM or NLP advanced techniques that automatically um, 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 extract uh, keywords from a document. Like for example, this is Spacey, I think. Yeah, and it's basically it's using basically name uh, entity recognition. To, to detect uh, like the important uh, names within a document and basically can extract them for you. But of course you have to keep in mind, sorry, I shouldn't go out, but it's, you, can, you have to keep in mind using these advanced techniques can be like um, expensive in meaning that they are like, um, they are added com computation. Uh, actually all of these, um, well, besides the consideration for chunking approaches, from here uh, on out, uh, all these augment augmentation methods are going to bring for you improvement, but sometimes can be expensive, meaning that they can be computationally, or actually if you are paying for your um, any part of this, can be actually like time or computationally expensive. Um, um, I mean, in the generation part, if you are paying for using your like open AI or something, it can be actually money expensive. Uh, all of these, of course, are money expensive because time is money. Um, anyway, so like these are like you start again uh, with the simplest way to add metadata, but then um, if you really need to use something different, you can consider these techniques. Um, Okay, so, right, so this is one, one thing that can be done. All right, just looking at the time, sorry. So, any questions? Should I keep going? Okay, so, uh, so we talked about chunking. We didn't talk about embedding, but this was just like, you are going to embed. Uh, you, and embedding, there are different embedding models that you can use. Uh, we will talk about like the embedding model a bit later uh, in the end. Um, but okay, so there is chunking, embedding, and now we can talk about indexing. So the index is um, basically like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm taking the meaning of indexing or, or like how index is defined in Llama index and Langchain. So these are ma the major frameworks that you can use with RAG to build your RAG system. There are, of course, there are other frameworks, but like uh, these are the mainly the most common, commonly used, and they are very convenient. 
So basically, they do the same things, but they are, for example, in llama index, there is actually a data structure, and in long chain, like they say, like there is a report manager. But the point is, is that it kind of track the document uh, and where it is stored in the in the vector database and how it can be retrieved, basically. So there are different types of indexing, or there are different index types. Um, there is, a, for example, here I'm taking these names from Llama index, but there, of course, there exists in Langqing as well, with the maybe different names. The point is one vector store index here, it, is, it uh, stores each node, you can see, node or chunk will be, so node or chunk, this is like the piece of text that you are um, storing embedding in the store uh, the vector store so you store the um, the chunk and the corresponding embedding in a vector is in the vector store um and when you query you you uh, like uh, you fetch the top k most similar chunks or similar nodes so you can say like this is what i was saying all over uh, all uh, like up to now this is what i was, I was describing retrieving as Retrieving is you are getting the most similar chunk using the embedding. Uh, I'm sorry, something happened. I don't know what happened actually, but there was some issue. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, I apologize. Um, uh, there was some technical issue actually. I think so. Let's just like uh, I was just saying that. Okay, so we're talking about indexing, and I talked about the this vector store index, and just like uh, what I'm saying here, what it says here is that it's like you're storing every every chunk or every node, node or chunk, the same thing. Uh, as it's embedding in the vector store, and then you fetch it depending on the most similar, measuring the semantic similarity, which is like defined uh, using the embedding, right? And you might say like, um, ignoring the rest of this uh, slide, you can say like, this is what I have been describing the retriever as, or how the retriever works, right? But there are other ways basically to retrieve like for example, there is a key, key keyword. Well, this is like the normal, like before using LLM or before using semantic uh, similarity, you can use, you can search by keyword. And this basically what means here when you are using keyword index is that you extract keywords from each node or from each chunk and build a mapping uh, from each keyword to the corresponding um, nodes or chunks. And during the query time, you extract keywords from the query and then fetch all the chunks that are, have the, the corresponding uh, keywords. So just looking at it, that, that. So ignore the left side, just looking at the keyword here, if we have node one, node two, and node three, or chunk one, chunk two, chunk three, uh, then like uh, you have keywords extracted. So each of these keywords have like are like mapped to the ones to the to the nodes that have them okay so city is here and here population is here and in not in node one and not three climate is in not three politics is in not three so yeah and when you find you you query your system your like um, yeah your system with a query that has nyc then it will go on and fetch node one, for example, because it has that keyword. Um, so this is when you are using keyword indexing, like you can say like, seems like um, 
um, something uh, simple while we're using a rack for that. But okay, we are passing it to the prompt, so it's, it's still a valid thing to do. If it's that what's like, for example, this can be like product names, and you want to the chunks from your document that only um, matters to that particular product. You don't need to actually measure the similarity between the query and the and the chunk because like the query will have a lot of stuff beside the, the product name and the different chunks will have other stuff as well. So if you are just measuring the similarity, it might give you something that is really similar or matches high similarity to, to your query, but it's not relevant because it doesn't matter to your product. That's uh, whatever the user is asking about. So it, it's, it's for some uses, this is better then actually this one is uh, here we're talking about just using similarity measurements. It's not the, this diagram is not very clear. What he's saying here is that you have a vector store and then you're embed, you're like storing the chunk, the embedding, um, embedding of each one of these chunks. And then when you have a query, you get the query embedding and measure the similarity. And then you retrieve like, for example, retrieving the top two, the top two, most similar chunks and you get back those with the query. So you have the query and the most similar chunks passed together to the to the LLM to generate the answer. There are other types of indexes. You can look at um, a Lama index or Lang chain to see the other kinds. There's summary, for example, summary index. Um, uh, so there are a few other types, but these are the most common thing. You can use, like you can explore which type like is better to your use case. But as we will see in a bit, you can use both. Like um, you can have both or multiple indexes at the same time. So basically, and in that case, in that, in that uh, case, if you're using more than one index, depending on the kind of query you get, you can decide to route your query to the appropriate index. Um, so this is what is called query routing. And um, basically when you construct your indexes, you can define in text when to use each, and then at the time of the query, an LLM, the LLM, so instead of the query being passed uh, directly to the retriever, it will pass by the LLM first. The LLM will choose which appropriate option it, it has to go through. And then like that, that, um, that index is going to be used. Uh, of course, like both Lama index and Lanky have tool for this. And we can actually look at the code a little bit. So basically query routing works basically for if you are choosing using more than one index but you can also be using um more than one uh, for example one more than one generator and again you will be using also query routing so this is like just like uh, let's look so this is just the code from i think from lama index yeah so you can see that here in like installing lama index and so what I will do is that, of course, there will be like um, the sentence splitter. This is for chunking. They will load the data first, and then you will use uh, a sentence splitter uh, with chunk size. I was a huge, a huge, a huge chunk. And then it's, they will define three indexes. So there is summary index, uh, which I didn't talk about, but uh, there is a vector index and keyword index. So um, and basically it will use each of this index as a retriever. So there will be less retriever based on the summary, and the retriever based on the vector, and the retriever based on the keyword. And then here, what will uh, you have to define basically, this is a step where you define each one of these. So um, you, like you are using a retriever tool from Lama index tools. And um, basically, you are passing the retriever with a description. So your like the list will retrieve all contexts. Uh, so this is actually what is it? The data um, is uh, 
Okay, we describe the data somewhere here. So Paul Graham essay, I'm not sure what is that exactly is, but uh, just what they are describing here, which each of these indexes, what what will what will it uh, like be used, wh when it will be used. So the list retriever, which is based on the summary index, will retrieve all context from Paul, uh, Paul Graham essay on what I worked on. Don't use if the question only requires more specific context. So this is will be using the whole thing, or the the whole document. Um, the vector retriever. This is going to be like uh, useful in a specific context from Graham Paul Graham essay on what I worked on. So this is the name of the essay. And this is of course remember that the vector retriever is the one that measures the sem um, semantic similarity. Keyword retriever, uh, this one will be retrieving um, uh, like uh, retrieving specific context uh, using entities mentioned in queries. So this one will be like using the keywords, while this will be like just uh, measuring the semantic similarity. And the summary is the one that will retrieve everything. So, so you are defining three indexes, three kinds of retrievers, and then you have to use a selector, selector model, which is an LLM, okay? And it will, it will like output a JSON, um, uh, and the corresponding index that uh, to be, to be, that is, is going to be queried, okay. Uh, So, so yeah, so just here is like, um, so what was, how it was defined. So it was list tool. Uh, this were like where the retrievers were, were defined and listed. And I'm going to pass them here um, to retriever tools. And I'm using here router ret retriever from uh, Loma index. And um, so the LLM, sorry, I, I want to see which LLM it is using. Um, so, so it's open AI GPT-4, okay. So, um, of course, uh, this is, again, this is not book from Lama Index. I'm not actually, I haven't run this. I actually cannot run it. Uh, but anyway, let's see, like, uh, you're using it. This is actually a use case. So, retrieve based on, can you give me all the context regarding the author lives? And you can see that the output, like, um, Uh, so it was selecting selecting retriever zero, which you remember from the list here was the list retriever, the mod based on summary that will retrieve everything. So it's like choosing correctly because if the, the question is asking, can you give me all the context? And then it's, yeah, it's using that one. So it's um, selecting everything. And um, Another choice, another example, what did Paul Graham do after RISD? And this is selecting retriever one. Uh, the question asks for a specific detail from Paul Graham essay. The second choice, which is useful for retrieving specific context is more relevant. So this is basically the answer from the LLM, justifying its, uh, like, uh, its choice and so on. Um, I mean, you can you can look through this, and in some use cases, this is useful. If you have like really varying use cases, you can basically use a uh, query routing to use the best retriever for your uh, for your answer. So uh, this notebook, just we are looking just as a retriever. We haven't like we're not looking at the final answer. 
um, just as a side note, um, both Llama Index and Long Chain have debug mode where you can, even if you are building some like complicated by pipeline, you can use a debug mode to look at step by step to see like how every step is performing. Um, so, okay. Just let it go through the remaining um, augmentation or like improvement um, methods. There is query rephrasing and augmentation. So here are there's actually several techniques. There is rephrasing. So in each of these techniques, you are basically using the LLM on the query itself um, to, to improve the retriever. So what you do is that if uh, the question from the, from the user, so if you remember, you, you take the question from the user, you pass it to, the, to your retriever, right? To get the most relevant chunk from your vector database. But uh, maybe the question from the user is not getting, for some reason, for, because of its phrasing, it's not getting the right uh, relevant chunk. You can rephrase it. So you can ask the LLM, rephrase this question for me. So it will be just be said in a different wording. And sometimes this will make a difference. Uh, or like you can like use uh, multiple rephrases from the same questions to get like maybe um, multiple uh, chunks that are retrieved and then you can take the most relevant from like the whole together. So uh, so this is one technique to use. Another one is, um, is hide, which is a strategy where like Sometimes the question, the question, like just measuring the similarity between the query, the question from the user, and the documents uh, that are in, or the chunks that are in the vector space is not good enough because, like, it's not that the, the questions is not semantically similar, the most to where the answer is. A possible answer, even if it's wrong, is, will be more, more similar. To, to the to the relevant chunk, and uh, what you do is that you ask an LLM to to answer your question, to answer the question of the user. Just make up a, an answer, but but whatever, like we'll give you and one answer or we'll generate a few answers, and then you take the question and the answer, and then look in your vector database uh, and see which part is the most relevant, measuring on on those. So. Having a hypothetical answer, and you use the hypothetical answer to find the relevant document instead of using the question or the question alone. So this one way. Uh, again, you can um, use subquery. So instead of uh, retrieving based on the full uh, user question or the full query, you can divide it into subqueries and try to answer, like make sub questions and then um, try to answer the sub-question instead of answering the, like, the complicated query. Um, I mean, this seems like, uh, uh, like uh, they have similarity or correspondence to like some prompt engineering methods. And um, yeah, because we are dealing with LLMs here, so there are some similarities. Yes, is that a question? Uh, okay, so what is this Baslaham question? Yeah, so of course I can share it, but like uh, you can look, actually I will share the, um, the slide, you will find the references because these collapse are just uh, um, from the documentation from Llama Index and I don't know if I have, yeah, this router retriever is from this uh, Llama Index, but of course I will share it. I will share this, uh, the link for it so you can find it. Um, okay, I will I will share it later. Uh, no problem. Okay, so uh, finally, this is something again. I don't know if you have now you have nightmares about fine tuning <laughs> well, because of last week uh, challenge. But there is another kind of well. Again, this is just fine tuning. Um, basically, uh, before you were fine tuning an LLM, now we can fine tune an embedding model. 
so uh, you know the embedding model the, the embedding what it does is that it like encodes um, your text into vectors that carry semantic semantic meaning okay but uh, depending on its understanding on what the text it was trained on of course like uh, it, it builds this understanding based on the text it was trained on if we are using um, our embedding on something that documents that have particular domain they have particular terms the particular wordings particular products particular abbreviations they or as a pre-trained embedding will not be able to understand the, them uh, as well so we can train in that sense we can train or re retrain fine-tune our embedding model on our relevant like uh, our text text that is relevant for us is from a particular domain we want our embedding to be able to embed the semantic uh, and relationships from our kind of um, text so we can fine tune uh, our the, embed, the pre trained embedding model um so of course like <laughs> this is not something you do the first step this will be like after like uh, and you actually can see that it was found that fine tuning uh, on the domain specific uh, uh, your embedding model of domain specific thing can improve your retriever for for five to ten percent more which is significant but not huge so when you start building your rack system this is not the first thing you do it's not the second thing you do it's like something you do after like you are actually already getting a great performance but you want to improve it a little bit more and then you can do this of course it's also something you do if you have a specific domain uh, text that you really think like um, the embedding model which is trained on generic uh, text is not getting as well if you have specific products or specific terminology it can be useful to do that if your like embedding model doesn't seem to completely understand them um okay so just like um fine-tuning um so there are like uh, for example there is like a lama index um uh so these are steps to do the fine-tuning using lama index for example and what you do is the first like you have um some documents uh, like a set of documents and what you do uh, is that you generate um, synthetic questions and answer from your data set and um, then you fine tune your model and evaluate it and just to maybe for i will take a two minutes to look at them the like there is a code um actually like it's like uh, again this is i can link for it actually um okay uh so what they do here is that like uh yeah so just to look at this is just um a repo that is available online you can you can find actually um so yeah uh so references uh should be yeah. so so this is the repo here gains from uh yes yeah, from lama index and how to do this fine tuning for the embedding model and uh so there are three three steps uh there is uh, generating the generating the synthetic data set um and basically of course what you're doing here is you're using an llm to generate it will look at your data set and create prompts and answers from 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 your data set um so automatically generate hypothetical questions that could be answered from with doc for in the corpus and that is what it will do for you so this is you're using like a, uh, open ai dbt 3.5 to do this step for you and um even though this is synthetic data it works very well to actually like um to to train uh your embedding uh model so here the next step is fine-tuning 
and you're going to be using sentence transformer to to fine tune the embedding model um here they are embedding uh, B, bge which i think is from bert um and um okay so it will be just like um so you're fine fine tuning fine tuning it by um so here i'm setting all the examples uh you define the loss here so um the multiple negative ranking loss is a great loss function if you only have positive pairs for example only pairs of similar text are like uh, like pairs of paraphrases pairs of duplicate questions pairs of query response of pairs so remember like in the the data set you created you asked your llm to generate questions that can be answered from the document so you are getting question and response from the documents so these are the ones that are positively correlated um so these are positively related basically and uh, you don't have a negative you don't have query and wrong response in your in your um in your data set so you only like it's, a, it's an imbalanced data that's why you have like uh, this uh, particular loss function works well with that and um yeah so after you define your loss function you have like uh you have to you can run the training here so yeah so these are like there are similar kind of uh, um parameters that you used before like um warmer steps and and evaluation steps at, at which at after how many steps and there are more uh the basically here how much time or how much computation power it should be much less than what you you, you need it for a, a full llm uh, of course but um again still this is something extra that requires some computation power time and um uh and you do only like you, you do only again if you want to really just uh, you already have great retriever and you want to improve it a little bit more, you can do that. Uh, and which is like, um, can be a competitive, uh, giving you a competitive edge above other people. But this is not what, something that you start with. Um, yeah, so since you already gone through this fine tuning and LLM, this should be a piece of cake for you, <laughs> if you try. But uh, honestly, I haven't tried myself, so I don't know how much time it can take. So yeah, by um, fine tuning and embedding. So we'll just end like this list here. Any question so far? Like we, I know I haven't talked in much details about any of this stuff, but um, um, if you have any question, you can actually. Like, Expand a little bit more. Any questions? I will give you a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to share this document or the slides because it has the references. Um, and the example cases and a lot of these references have code. So you can, if you want to try them out, you can. Yeah, so if you don't have any questions, okay, let's end the session here. Or I have actually a tutorial, right? So let me actually let you go.